In this short circuit, I'm going to take a look at the phase shift oscillator. It's a very stable single transistor sine wave oscillator that works over a broad voltage range. This is going to be important for the next video where we make point contact germanium transistors. Before we get started, let's get some of the basics out of the way. We all know there's 360 degrees around a circle. If we cut it in half and flip it over, we get what looks like a sine wave. We can now represent 0 to 360 degrees in a sine wave. One period of a sine wave is from 0 degrees to 360 degrees, or in other words, 0 of the next period. Waves are considered phase shifted or out of phase when they do not superimpose on top of each other. For instance, this represents 180 degrees out of phase. When one wave is crossing at 0, the other is crossing at 180 degrees. In our circuit, we'll be using a delay element. In this case, it's a capacitor and resistor. The charge and discharge of the capacitor will lag the input depending on the values chosen for the capacitor and resistor. The next part of the circuit that we need is an inverting amplifier. In this case, it's an NPN transistor with a pull-up resistor to the positive rail. When no current is flowing into the base of the transistor, it's off, and the pull-up resistor is pulling the output close to the positive rail. When current flows into the base of the transistor, it turns on, pulling the output closer to ground. The input-to-output phase relationship is 180 degrees. Combining all these concepts together, we can make a phase oscillator. In this case, there's three delay elements and one inverting stage. Part of the output is fed back into the delay elements. Since there's a 180 degree phase difference between the input and the output of the amplification stage, the oscillator will find a resonance to where it will satisfy this phase relationship through the delay elements. Changing the values of the resistors or capacitors in the delay elements or the number of delay elements will change the frequency that the oscillator will oscillate at. A rule of thumb would be larger the capacitance and smaller the resistance, the slower the oscillation. With a slight modification, you can use a PNP transistor. And this also represents using a different phase angle for the output. You can utilize each of these phase angles if needed. Although there is a loss in amplitude between each stage. This is the formula to calculate in frequency in hertz, number of delay stages, the capacitance in farads, and the resistance in ohms. This is only approximate because the input to the transistor, the loading of your output, will all affect the frequency that it oscillates at. I've built the circuit and hooked it up to an oscilloscope. We can see the first line, that's the output. The next lines are di different delay stages with lower and lower amplitude on each and phase shift on each. If I overlay the input and the output of the gain stage, you can clearly see there's a 180 degree phase shift. And with that, I'll leave you with the soothing tones of a phase shift oscillator.